Sniffers and Spruce Snippers. Welcome back to Blitzcrank Model Works. I'm Bob, and today we're going to do an inbox review of Mini Arts Kit 35177, their T80 Soviet light tank. Now, this kit first came out in 2007 as kit number 35038 and included their Soviet officers at field briefing figure set. This kit came out in 2010. Both kits offer individual track links. Uh, not workable, but glue together. There is no rubber band option. This kit dispensed with the figures, but included a photo etch fret for extra detail. It was re-released in 2016 uh, under kit number 35243 and included their Soviet tank crew at rest figure set and also included their working track set that was for their T-70 tank, which also works for the T-80 and by the way, also works for their SU-76M kit. I do not know if that working track link set will work for something like the old Allen kit. I don't know why you'd want to use it for that anyway. Or for the new, uh, uh, the kit that came out, I think it was last year, Tamiya's T, um, sorry, SU-76 kit. Um, the, the vehicle itself is the same for all issues. Uh, the only difference is the later issues include the photo etch and the very last issue, not this one, uh, comes with workable track links. Now, I could not find any other fig or any other manufacturer that did a T80 light scout tank in plastic. Uh, they are mini art and a, an old company called Techmod. Uh, Techmod released a T70 back in 1997. Uh, there was actually two different variations. I think the first one came out in 94 and then the kit that I have, which I had in an earlier video, it was mostly built. Uh, that one came out in 97. And a few years after that, some company called Toga re reboxed the old Techmod set. Um, very simplistic, uh, not a lot of parts. It's a rather large box considering the small parts, which give you a little, a few problems with the kit. And we'll get into that when we start looking at the sprues later on. So I'm just going to move everything over to the bench and we'll start off with the instructions. So we have Mini Arts typical um, vehicle box. Uh, this is used for their T70s and their SU76, all the different variations. Very nice box art, very thick. Again, just box art. A photo of your photo at fret. Now normally I just skip to uh, the instructions and the parts. It seems to be a bit of a pain to open up here. But I wanted you to see what we have to deal with in here. And when you open it, you see that there's a lot of space for the parts. And, I mean, realistically, um, this could have been packed a bit better. They do come in, in individual plastic wraps, um, but stuff was not packed all that well and stuff had moved around and there was some damage and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But right now I'm going to go over the instructions, which are actually pretty simple and straightforward. I built a couple of mini art kits uh, in the past and they were actually pretty easy to do. So here's the instructions. It's 11 steps. There are no decals in the kit. Uh, there's nothing on the sprue map. Uh, you have a sprue A, a sprue B, two sprue C's, which are your road wheels, and four sprue D's, which are your tracks, a sprue E, and your photo etch fret. Uh, you don't know how well it shows up here, but this kit shares uh, a few sprues with their earlier T70 kit, so they actually have some grayed out parts here and there, which you do not use. Uh, also not shown when we get to the sprue, you'll actually see them, but in these locations are the upper and lower turrets for the T70 tank, which had a single, it was a single man turret uh, versus the T80, which is a two man turret, which was the biggest difference identi uh, visually between the two. Uh, the paint callouts, paint chart is actually rather nice. You have Vallejo, Tester, Tamiya, Humbrol, Revel, Mr. Color, which is a Gunzi out of Japan uh, with English and Ukrainian. When you actually look at the color callouts in the instructions, um, the difference is when we get to like, I'll, I'll show you here and then we'll go back to the instructions. The parts are just kind of out in the open. The color callouts are 
rectangle they're squared off and colored in gray so you got to kind of keep an eye open for that oddly like that's the instructions there is no color call out for the whole vehicle there are no decals there's no option markings it's just the vehicle and i'm guessing they presume that you know what color to paint it yourself because i didn't see anything on here um, for which color what color oh color number two which is field green is what they call it so that would be tamia xf67 which is nato green yeah close enough i guess for russian green russian green was kind of all over the place in the war so you start with your upper and lower hulls uh, the lower hull is a bathtub style slide molded although oddly they tell you to put on these bump stops for the suspension there's two of them there's actually three the first one is molded on but they give you um, measurements for where to put the other two so you have to have a good ruler and I've got some good steel rulers you can pick those up in most art shops or uh, if you're machinist well you'll have those on hand anyway there are a few parts that um, in the kit that you won't use because they've been replaced with PE but there are some parts that like these parts here that they tell you that which are photo etch parts they tell you to put in you don't have an option because I can't find the corresponding part on the sprue that they would replace so you're stuck with PE the PE parts are well called out though um, the hatch interiors especially on the turret um, when we get to the sprues you'll see it, they're more of a suggestion for detail there's not much there but the detail on the kit itself is quite nice going on I don't know why they tell you to put that's kind of odd that they have you put that in um, I guess the turret race is different between the the T70 and the T80 so they tell you nicely you know the track number and the color they do not tell you how many tracks per side and unfortunately I did not look that up uh, I'll put a little notation down here nice main gun with some inter rudimentary interior detail the turret itself they don't tell you again how to uh, give you an option to open or close your hatches uh, the interior detail is pretty rudimentary at best putting your exterior detail on with some more PE and then your final assembly and that's it again no color pictures no paint markings for the whole exterior other than that that's one spot is all I can see I didn't not even see anything actually for the turret oh nothing even for the turret so so this one spot in step six is the only place that tells you where to actually paint the turret at all <laughs> so that's it for the instructions really simple I built a couple of the mini art kits and they're actually pretty simple to put together so now we're going to go on to the sprues so this is sprue A and like we saw on the sprue map on the instructions there are a few parts on here that you won't use you're not going to use one of the matlets you're not going to use the turret uh, there's a few other bits that you won't be using the hull is slide molded which is really interesting that it's slide molded and it's on the sprue usually slide molded lower hulls are a separate component anybody that's had a tamia kit or dragon kits anything that's a bathtub mold it's really odd to not have it as a separate part but to have it on the sprue uh, the details rather nice the side detail is, is really nice as well it's sort of right side up so the swing arms are keyed so they'll stay all level the one bump stop is molded in but again there's no locations for the other one so you do have to measure so you have to measure across and then you'll have to measure up using this one as your reference you have your upper hull i'll show you some of the other parts whether they're used or not the fenders aren't too bad they're uh pretty uh, pretty thick nothing a bunch of mud couldn't fix I couldn't find any photo etch that's available really there's not a lot available for this particular kit there's some stuff for the t70 and I'm not sure um, how well it'll transfer over uh, if they share the same fenders on the lower hull it shouldn't be a problem and there's your tools which aren't too too bad 
Now these are used in earlier versions of the kit, but they are not used um, with this particular kit. These are replaced with photo etch. These are like intake and uh, intake screens for your engine. And the flip side, there's not. It's the interior machine gun. So the, the fenders are kind of on the thick side. You can thin them down with a little bit of scraping, carving, swearing. This is Sprue B. This is the much larger two-man turret. If, if you could call it larger, I guess in comparison to the original turret, it's much larger. It is quite nice. It almost looks like from the parts that it's slide molded as well, which would explain why there's such a large gap around it. The smaller details are pretty nice. Not that there's much to it. Um, the barrel is a one-piece barrel. It is not slide molded. Um, oh, it is. It actually has hollow molded muzzle. So again, that must be why there's such a huge area rather than having the uh, end open or a hoop. Usually you see a kind of a hoop where the slide mold for the inner core would come out. So they, they do this all on the sprue, which is that's kind of a cool idea. Because even the matlet, you look at the matlet and the bolt detail is pretty good but also has bolt detail on the sides. Now the mat, you know, the, the detail is, it's pretty decent. Like the hinge details in that are pretty good. And even for the hatches, I mean, even though the handles, the lift handles are um, molded in place, are, you know, it's pretty nice, but then you can look at the inside and it's like, that's just rough. <laughs> That's barely a suggestion of a, ha of a handle. I mean, there's probably nothing really on the inside but a little latching handle, but that's not all that great. They could have put a couple of handles somewhere, considering some of the small parts that they had on their grab handles and that they could have done something in there. So this is uh, Sprue C. You get two of these, and these have all your suspension components. And something that I, I didn't notice until I pulled this out of the box and I started looking at it, um, only Sprue C have tabs on them. None of the other sprues do, but the Sprue C tabs don't say anything at all. There's, I don't even know why they bothered putting them on there. Um, but this is your road wheels and your swing arms and the driver's hatch. You get two different styles. One of them we do not use. Turn rollers, some nice detail, lifting rings shocks, tow hooks, some punch out marks on the back of the road wheels, but that's perfectly fine because you're never going to see them. Drive sprocket, which is a one piece, it's just a single row of tooth drive sprocket. See the inside of these hatches have, I would say, considering what you would see if they were open, they would have more detail than what's included on the driver and uh, gunner's hatches. Or, sorry, the commander and gunner's hatches. Even some nice detail on the inside of the swing arms. So these are your track sprues. Now, normally I would only show you one because they're all the same, but I want to show you that you got four different sprues, and I put ID tape on them, uh, not because they're different, but because every single one of them has at least one damaged track, uh, track link that was damaged when I opened the box. And these were in plastic. And this one with the blue actually has a short shot on it. So there is a track link that is incompletely molded. Right there, that's what's called a short shot. Now that's caused by like an air bubble being trapped in there or the pressure of the injector not being high enough um, or the temperature of the sprue not being correct. There, there's all kinds of factors that can do it, but it, it's pretty rare in modern kits that you actually see this. Now, if it was just the one link, it wouldn't be a problem. But, you know, when you're looking through this and you get, you know, there's a broken link there and there's at least one or two uh, that one there is, this one's broken. Now, if you can find them on here, I kind of have to flex them a little bit. Uh, there's that one there. It's 
broken. There's another one right there that's broken. And then this one, I should have marked all these, but yeah, there's there's at least one, uh, one or two links on every one. Now, normally that wouldn't be, uh, you know, a huge issue. Uh, most of these you can just use a dab of glue before you take them off, let the glue cure completely or, or set completely and then trim them um, before you take them off. But just to let you know that this can happen, it's not something that's just a mini art thing. I've seen it with other brands, um, but because of the volume of this box and how it was packed, um, it, it's a bit of an issue. I, hopefully I'm, I'm a rare, rare one with this. But the detail in the tracks themselves are pretty good. I mean, you have do have hollow guide horn, or no, sorry, they're not hollow guide horn. But they are nice. There are some punch out pin marks, but you can, uh, it's unfortunate they're on the outside. There's no place else to really put them because of the uh, size of them. And there's no jig for assembly, so you're going to have to rig something up yourself to keep them straight while you put them up. These are the last few items in the box. You get a small sprue for some lights and periscopes. And clear. So you should paint up fairly well. And then you get your photo etch sprue, your fret. Um, this is not in a bag. This is actually a peel away adhesive protector. I left that on just to show you guys because once you take it off, you're not putting it back on at least straight. Now the etch is flat on this side and there's a little bit of texture on the front. Hopefully that shows up with the screens. That's kind of neat how they put the wing nuts on as part. So guys like Aber and Voyager and Lion Roar and all those guys that put those separate, if you can at all put them as part of that part so you don't have to glue those on separate, please do. Um, these are the, the veins that go underneath this piece um, on the engine deck. They're pretty nice. The grab handles, I'm not so sure about. I've never been a big fan of photo etch grab handles because they are kind of square. And there's not much you can do about it other than hand paint a bunch of paint on to kind of build it up and make give them the illusion of being round. And that's it. It looks like a really good kit. Uh, this is going to be going into my twin Panther diorama for the 75th anniversary of the Panther entering World War II. Uh, the kit's available, uh, currently I paid, uh, what did I pay, about $50 Canadian, it's 2018, um, so I paid, yeah, about $50 Canadian. Uh, good kit, um, you can get uh, metal track links for them, I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to use the plastic ones for now. Uh, this is going to be kind of uh, abandoned or knocked out, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, with a couple of Panther Fs that I'm building currently, so I'm going to do a, a build update for that once I get a little bit built on this thing. So again, thank you very much. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have uh, any constructive comments or questions, uh, please post them in the comment section below. And thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.